We've got just a short review here to do for basic agency roles. Um, and first up is a real estate brokerage. And just kind of in general, the term brokerage is just simply the act of bringing two parties together. So a brokerage, we're talking about real estate, of course, but a brokerage could be insurance, it could be stocks and trading. Um, it could be anything where we bring two parties together. A real estate broker is someone that has a license and that can get paid in exchange for those services. And I want to point out for the exam, any form of payment, whether it's a commission, referral fee, finder's fee, flat fee, hourly rate, um, whatever they call it, if it's compensation, it goes to the broker. Okay, um, that's how the that, that's how we make money in real estate. Is the broker is the one that gets paid, and no matter what it's called, payment must go through the broker first. Then that allows them to pay their salesperson, um, who cannot work independently. Um, they must work under the supervision of a real estate broker. Um, that allows that salesperson then to get paid by the broker according to what their independent contractor states. Um, their independent contractor agreement, which I've got a sample here coming up, that's going to say what the split is between the broker and the salesperson in terms of commissions, um, duties, responsibilities, um, some things like that. So the broker pays the salesperson. A salesperson can never get paid just directly from a client. All those monies have to go through the brokerage and all the contracts go through the brokerage too. The salesperson has to work underneath the broker. A real estate assistant is gonna be probably someone in your office who does a supporting role of maybe marketing, uh, maybe they're accounting, um, maybe they do work for an agent and just help them with the day-to-day -day operations of a business. Um, this independent contractor, um, this is going to be a little bit different than maybe what some of you are used to um, as a W-2 employee, where for a salary or a set hourly rate, you come into an office uh, or you start work at a specific time you end at a specific time, you got so much vacation, you're allowed per year, you maybe get a benefits package, et cetera. Um, an independent contractor is truly independent um, and there are no employee benefits, um, but there's also nothing tying you down to a restriction of when you show up to work. There's no, your broker is not gonna ever really be able to mandate meetings for you, even though there's some that I wish that they could because they're very important. Um, that independent contractor agreement is you really are basically a bit in business for yourself under the direction of a real estate broker. Now with that independent contractor agreement and that relationship, several of you may choose in your career to actually form an LLC or a limited liability corporation with let's say maybe an S corp attached to it. And I am by no means an accountant, I'm a real estate agent, um, but this is something for you to talk to your accountant about for your career. Um, you can get paid as Amy Schaefer or John Doe in a transaction. Um, you might have benefits to getting paid LLC. And your LLC could be named anything. It, it probably really even shouldn't be real estate related. It could be named after your dog. It could be Hazel Puppy LLC. And then your broker can pay you then to that employment identification number instead of your social security number. Um, that is one way that money can flow in a relationship between a broker and a salesperson. The reason I point it out is on the exam, I could see a scenario where they might ask about that relationship. And if you do set up an LLC as an independent contractor, what does your broker now owe you? And the answer is nothing. Nothing changes about that independent contractor agreement. Um, they're going to pay you as they normally do, 
Just like I said, instead of paying it to Amy Schaefer, they're going to pay it to Hazel Puppy LLC with an employment identification number instead of my social security number. A non-agent is someone in the transaction that works as a facilitator. Um, they help track uh, deadlines. Uh, they help track what steps have been taken care of in the process. Um, they really help ensure a timely closing by helping you keep organized. In fact, there's sometimes people that are really good with the extra paperwork that comes along with real estate. Um, some are licensed, some are not. Um, what I do want to point out to this is as a non-agent in the transaction, while they are working for one party, they do kind of have a generic role in the transaction, really to be of good faith and good service and honest to everyone. Um, again, they're not there to put out anything confidential um, that would maybe leave a client unprotected, but they really do work there kind of in facilitative mode. Power of attorney. This is a role that you can be assigned by someone. Uh, power of attorneys are very common um, with, let's say, a military family where someone gets called overseas to serve our country. They maybe leave a power of attorney back here with a spouse so that that spouse can still pay bills and stuff out of their uh, bank account. It's a pretty generic one. Some of you might be familiar with a power of attorney in terms of health direction and medical. Another type of power of attorney could be for real estate. And that allows you to make real estate decisions as if you were the owner. They've given you the capability to make decisions on their behalf. So a really good example would be if you had a listing with a seller, you had their home for sale, and the sellers were going to be unavailable for three weeks while they were in Europe. And they said, well, we're gone. We're giving you power of attorney. And as long as the house sells for $250, sell it. That's the minimum that we'll take. Once they leave, and now you've got this power of attorney in place, and you get an offer at $250, what do you do? And you can proceed with that as if you were them by this power of attorney. You don't have to wait for them to return. You don't need to contact their attorney. They can move on as if you were them. Um, I do want to stress, though, for your career, not all power of attorneys are the same. Again, like I mentioned, there's maybe kind of a generic banking one. There's one for health. And one for real estate isn't one that you're just going to create in the next 30 minutes. It's going to need to probably be recorded and take some extra steps. So just know that not all power of attorneys are created equal. In order for it to be successful, it's got to include real estate specifically. Um, I pulled this independent contractor agreement actually off of just the internet, just so that you can open it up and kind of see a few things that it relates to. Um, you'll get one from your broker as well for you to review. Um, another place that might have an independent contractor agreement, for those of you who are joining the Iowa Association of Realtors, uh, being a part of that member means that you get access to a lot of generic statewide forms. And I do know that they've got one in there that's an independent contractor agreement as well. So just know that there's a couple of that. Up next on the list is real estate agency. We'll keep diving into this relationship between an agent and their client.